Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we are finally starting the topic differentiation. Uh, this is a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a very long time. I did a few live streams on various parts of differentiation, but uh, this is uh, this is where we will do it more systematically and we'll start from the very basics. Okay, you guys have been asking for it, so here it is. Okay, so in this video, as you can see, we will do just the introduction. Now, a lot of times what happens is we do know how to differentiate, okay? That's something you can very easily learn or memorize. But the thing is, we fail to understand the core reason, the, the basic um, idea behind differentiation. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try and explain to you guys. And hopefully, once you understand that, once you develop a good understanding of why we differentiate more than how we differentiate, then this topic will become a whole lot easier, as I know that a lot of you are struggling with this topic. Okay, now the whole idea behind differentiation is to find the gradient, okay? And that gradient could mean a lot of things. It could mean, in some cases, it can mean speed. In some cases, it can mean acceleration. And then through differentiation, you can find lots of things. You can find the turning point. You can find the equation of tangent, okay? Now, if you focus on what I said at the very beginning, I said the basic idea of differentiation is to be able to find the gradient, okay? Now, you may be thinking, and you should be, that we already know how to find the gradient. And you're right. You already know how to find the gradient of a straight line. And we also know that you can pick any two points on the straight line, okay, it doesn't matter, as long as they're on the same line, as long as they're collinear, the gradient will be the same, okay? And that's because the ratio of rises to run is the same. And we say that a straight line has a constant slope, okay, which it does, because the steepness remains the same throughout. And the way to do that, the way to find out the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. Now, we don't use differentiation to find the gradient of a straight line because we already know how to do that. But we use differentiation to find the gradient of a curve. Now, you know, at this point, you may still be thinking that we already know how to do that. And you're right in saying so. Yes, you absolutely do know how to find the gradient of a curve. And that is through the help of this thing called tangent. And you might have done this in uh, the topic called graphs of functions. Yeah. And what we do is, the idea is that you pick a point where you want to find out the gradient. Let's say you want to find out the gradient in this point. And then what you do is, you make a tangent at this point. And once you do make a tangent at this point, you again pick any two points lying on the tangent and find the gradient, okay? Now this method is, let's say this is x1 by the way, okay? So you'll make a tangent in x1 and you'll find the gradient, okay? Now this method is absolutely correct, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not very accurate, okay? And the reason why it's not very accurate is because um, you can't always be sure of the steepness of the tangent, okay? Which is why in a lot of cases, you'll see that there is always a range of acceptable answers, okay? So as long as your answer is falling inside that range, it's good enough, okay? So this is exactly where differentiation comes in. So in essence, the whole idea behind differentiation is to be able to find the gradient of the tangent. And like I said earlier, that with the help of that, you can find out the coordinates of the turning point. You can find the maximum value, the station, it, they both mean the same thing. And at this moment, you don't have to freak out what all these terms mean, okay? This is something that we will understand with the passage of time. But in essence, the idea of differentiation is to be able to find the gradient of the tangent, okay? Now, just to give you an overview as to what exactly will our approach be to find the gradient of this tangent, okay? So I'll just write down a few steps so that you know exactly how it is that we find out the gradient of tangent. Now, it's important for you to understand the terminologies that we're going to be using in this topic, okay? So let's say that the equation of the curve is y, okay? Then what happens if you differentiate it? We call it dy by dx, which basically means difference in y over difference in x. But this is going to be an expression. An expression means that it's going to be in terms of x, okay? And just like that, if let's say the equation of the curve is given as f of x, what happens when you differentiate it? You get f prime of x, okay? So again, this prime is just to differentiate between the equation of the curve and the equation of the differential, or in other words, the gradient function. Okay, so now we're gonna learn how to differentiate some very basic power functions, okay? And we're gonna do that with the help of a few examples. So first, I will do a few examples, and then we're gonna look at the pattern, and we're gonna try and come up with a general rule, okay? So the reason why we call them power functions is because you have x, which is raised to a certain power, okay? So let's say you wanna differentiate y equals to x cubed, okay? So what are you gonna do? First of all, the differential of y is gonna be written as dy by dx, okay? So here's what happens. You multiply the power by the coefficient of x cubed, which in this case is one, so three times one is three, and you reduce the power by one. Or in other words, you take one away from the power. So that means 
the differential of x cube is equal to 3x squared. Now, what does that mean? That means if you have a curve, which is y equals to x cubed, and then if you differentiate it, the gradient function of that curve is equal to 3x squared. That means if you want to find out the gradient of the tangent of the curve x cubed at any value of x, all you got to do is plug in that value of x at which you want to find out the gradient in the gradient function, which is dy by dx, which is 3x squared, and you will have the gradient of that tangent at that particular point, okay? Let's link it with what we have over here, okay? So let's say the equation of the curve over here is f of x, okay, as I've written over here. So what happens when I differentiate it? When I differentiate it, we get f prime of x. Now let's say if you wanna find out the gradient of tangent at x equals to x1, all you gotta do is once you've differentiated it and you have f prime of x, you plug in the value of x in the gradient function. That means you plug in f prime of x1. x1 could be any value of x, one, two, three, could be negative, could be anything at all. And what you get as a result is the gradient of tangent, okay? T for tangent, M is the symbol for gradient, okay? So this is the core understanding that's very, very important in order to be able to understand the questions of differentiation correctly, and of course, in order to be able to attempt them correctly, okay? So let's carry on with a few more examples and then we'll try and come up with a general rule. So let's say you have y equals to 5x to the power 4. What happens when you differentiate this? Let's see. If you differentiate 5x to the power 4, you end up with, so 4 and 5 get multiplied. So what's that? That's 20. You take 1 away from the power. So what happens? You have 20x cubed. Okay. Now, as like I said, let's try and generalize this. Okay. So let's say you have y is equals to ax to the power n. Okay, and you wanna come up with a general rule of differentiating a function like this, which is a power function. So here's how this works. dy by dx is equals to n times a, the power and the coefficient get multiplied, and you take one away from the power, so that means now you have x to the power n minus one. And this is pretty much every, this is, this is pretty much exactly what we're gonna be doing over and over again if we have a function which is a power function. Okay, now here's something different it's y equals to square root x. Okay, then what happens? So if you have y equals to square root x, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna write it nicely, or as I like to call it, you wanna make it differentiation ready, okay? So as you can see, I haven't differentiated it yet, okay? I've just made it, written it in such a way so that it's easy for me to differentiate, okay? Now I can see exactly what the power is, I can see exactly what the coefficient of x is, which is one in this case, okay? So what happens if I differentiate it? dy by dx is equals to half x to the power half minus one. Okay, now you can leave it here. Uh, no, actually you can't leave it here. You can simplify half minus one, which becomes minus half. Okay, so one upon two, x to the power minus half. Now you can leave it over here, but that's not something I would recommend, okay? I would recommend to try and make the power positive because that is how you will find most of the answers written. Now there's nothing wrong with leaving it over here. It's perfectly all right. You're gonna get full marks, okay? But it's nice if you were to write it like this, two over square root x. Now you can see that I've skipped a step over here, okay? So instead of writing it as x power half, I've rewritten as square root x. Now that entirely is up to you, however way you wanna write it, okay? But this just looks nicer, okay? But again, that's just my personal preference, okay? All right, now here's another question. This is y is equals to three x cubed plus five x squared minus seven x plus one, okay? Now this, as you can see, is different from the questions that we've solved so far because it has like multiple terms with it. Okay, now let's see what happens if I differentiate this. So three into three becomes nine, and then you take one away from the power, so that's nine x squared, plus five into two, so that's 10 x minus seven. Now, and why do we have minus seven? That's because x has power one, so one times seven is seven, and then if you take one away from x power one, so that becomes x power zero, which is equal to one. And then what happens to this one? Well, if you differentiate one, it becomes zero. And as a matter of fact, if you differentiate any constant, let's say y equals to c, if you differentiate any constant, the answer is equal to zero. The question is, why is that? Now, the reason why that is, is because this one has no power of x. That means it has x power zero. Now, what happens when you multiply zero and one together? It becomes zero, and then whatever happens next becomes irrelevant because zero multiplied by anything is it gonna be equal to zero, okay? Now you might think for a second that the power on x is gonna be zero minus one, which is minus one. But again, like I said, since it's gonna be multiplied by zero, it just becomes completely irrelevant, okay? Now we're just, we, I'm just gonna get rid of this zero over here. Now, another thing that I would like you to understand, 
which will further develop your understanding of differentiation is that if you just look at, let's say, y equals to 7, okay, or any value for that matter, 7, let's, let's say y equals to 2, okay, no particular reason behind switching from 7 to 2, okay, so what kind of a line is y equals to 2 going to be? And if you're thinking straight, well, all lines are straight, okay, so y equals to 2, yes, it's going to be a straight line, but it's going to be a horizontal line, okay, that's how we further classify straight lines, horizontal, vertical, upward sloping, downward sloping, okay, Wait, or diagonal in other words. Now, if you think about it, this is a horizontal line, okay? And from prior knowledge, you should know that the gradient of a horizontal line is equal to what? Is equal to zero. And if you remember what I said at the very beginning, the differentiation is basically nothing but finding gradient, okay? Now, what happens if you differentiate y equals to two? Let's look at it that way. If you differentiate y equals to two, okay? That means dy by dx is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to zero. And that makes total sense. Why? Because the gradient of this line we saw is equal to zero. And then there's something else I want you to pay attention to. Let's say you have a, oops, sorry. Let's say you have another line, okay? Just a random line. Let's say you have y is equals to three x. Y can't be minus. Let's say three x plus two, okay? Since this value is two. Now, just by looking at the equation, you can probably tell what the gradient of this line is, okay? It's three. Now let's see what differentiation tells us. Okay, what if differentiation tells us a different story? But you'll realize that's actually not the case. Differentiation tells us the exact same story that if you differentiate three x plus two, all you're left with is three because x power one, one gets multiplied by three, that's three. x, the power on x becomes zero, so that's just as good as one. Three into one is three. And two, which is a constant, differentiates and turns into zero. And you can see that is because the gradient of these two lines are three and zero respectively, okay? So there you go. This was, all of this was just to further strengthen your understanding of differentiation. Now I have a lot of complex questions lined up later. So we're gonna do those questions. I'll solve a few questions and then I'll ask you guys to solve um, the rest of the questions. Now these questions, by the way, are from the AdMaths book, okay? I'll perhaps leave a link to the soft copy of this book so you can download it and try and solve as many questions as you want. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.